adventurers and welcome to skill tree where we learn how to do just about everything now as most of you know we are going to conquest next week oh that happened way too fast now because i've been working on a lot of different projects and stuff i'm honestly man i'm so far behind but i did get one thing settled that is the general look of my character cal so if you saw in this episode here, I made like a little musketeer hat that I thought would be like a good statement piece for him. Because I'm of the opinion you don't need a lot of different clothing, you just need a couple of statement pieces that really say what your character is. Save you that money, you know what I'm saying? But in trying to isolate that look, I wanted one more statement piece. So I got this item here from Berg Snyder. That is called the Barnaby Jacket. It's the leather brown one. Um, and I, I love it. Look at, look at my costume kind of put together here. Like that's not all of it, but already like you get the vibe I'm going for, right? He's a gambler and kind of a rogue. And in general, just, just kind of a ne'er-do-well. There's a problem though, because that coat is just too clean. Like my dude has been running from debtors and doesn't have the money sometimes for a hotel room, so sleeps inside of a bush or something. So I thought it would be really fun today if we took that stock standard kind of Barnaby coat and added a lot of story to it. You know, weathering, adding some like extra little, little bits and pieces to it. Generally making it our own. I think that'd be fun. So without much further ado, let's get right into it and level up this skill. All right, so first things first with this coat is I really need to see like where it fit me, where it was tight, where like wear points. I said wear an awful lot there. But you know, where it would get dirty, where it would get like discolored a little bit. So I just try to move around in it and immediately I broke it. Right here under the right armpit where this seam is. And I think I actually got this a size too small for me. I got a medium and I probably should have gotten a large. But once I ripped it there, it actually fit really comfortably. And because of the type of character I have, I'm really glad for this rip. This is actually going to play part of that story. Anyways, to even better assess where I needed to like adjust and add wear marks to and stuff, I brought it outside to really stress test it. I did the most athletic thing I know how to do, which is my chain whip here. Just kind of flinging it all over the place and making sure this coat was loose and comfortable on me. Then I got my dark soles on and just, just rolled. Rolled everywhere. Finally, I ventured out into the woods to get myself some firewood, digging around through the trees and breaking limbs. Basically like I would do if I was setting up my own camp, because again, this guy had to live rough fairly often. So like his, his clothing would show that. Then finally, I did what he would do best. Just kind of find a tree somewhere and, and take a nap. And I found this did two things. First and foremost, it got me prepared for like being in this costume for a while. It's supposed to be hot at Conquest and it was hot that day. But I discovered that like my hat was fairly comfortable and the jacket, although made of leather and fairly heavy, does breathe a lot. Those holes kind of under the arms really help with that. But the other thing I could see clearly when I lay it out on my table is just all of the spots that wear should happen. The marks on my back from where I leaned up against a tree. Somewhere on my shoulders from carrying a bag. And of course that armpit area. If your hands are down by your side and your arms move just kind of naturally, this is always going to be under some kind of a friction, right? So with all that information under my belt, I got ready to beat this thing up. To do this because it is a leather like suede material, I decided to use this wire brush. That would probably be too aggressive if it was like a smoother leather. You'd leave a lot of scratches. But for this particular material, it seemed to work really well. Now the first place I hit was right at the bottom of the coat because that's where like brambles would catch and I'd kick all the time and puddles would splash up. And as you can see, this did a really good job when you compare it to where there wasn't any wear marks to where I attacked it with the brush. It's just more soft and warm. Now that I know that works, I just hit the rest of that bottom, adding a little bit more wear towards the front, thinking that's where my legs would kick and it would kind of be the part of the coat that would hit things as I walk through, right? Like bushes and brambles or whatever. Then moving up the coat, I started hitting all the spots that stick out the most. So like this seam that goes right along the waist, the area right underneath the arm, and then the top of the shoulders, which I actually hit with some sandpaper. The sandpaper was actually a lot more aggressive looking than the wire brush. Um, and I'm okay with that because that would be where like, I'm carrying packs all the time and stuff. That would actually end up with a lot of wear and tear. Now to show the difference though, I only did one side. And even just this little bit of messing with it, like look at how good this looks. My left side, while well, the right side on your screen, looks way more worn and well used. While the other side looks almost brand new. You can see down at the bottom the difference in the wear and how much that discolors it. 
Same with up at the top where the buttons are. Thinking, you know, he'd be like worrying over them a lot, putting the buttons together, taking the buttons off. Again, having one of those straps come like cross chest instead of just on your shoulders, which my character is gonna have often. So seeing that difference and really liking it, I just went ahead and did the exact same thing to the other side. And as you can see, this is now looking like a well-worn jacket. Well-worn, not destroyed. I'm really going for this. I am gonna do some damage to this thing pretty soon, but like, this is the one item that my, my guy that I'm gonna be playing has that is like of pretty good quality. As such, he's tried to take good care of it on the road. As things break, they try their best to sew it up. As it gets dirty, he tries his best to clean it. Like, this isn't a thing like this one I did over here last time I was going over weathering. That thing, I destroyed. I completely roughed that thing up. But this piece, I just want to look lived in, not rocked. I even went back in with the brush while I was wearing it, just to get like at the very top of my hips. The area where if I'm walking through a, like a crowded street or something, or I'm leaning against the table, would get a lot of wear. Then I use my hands to really mat that area down to give extra smooth wear. Kind of like if my hands were wet, that's where I'd wipe them. Or again, if I'm leaning against a table, it's not going to be like rough damage so much as that really kind of smooth ground in damage. All right, so at this point, I'm happy with that. That looks really cool. I'd kind of be down with just wearing that jacket. But it doesn't tell enough of a story. Now that jacket just kind of looks older than it actually is. So next, my guy is a, like a card player. He's a gambler. So he's going to spend a lot of time like this. He's going to be at a table all the time. He's going to be leaning against it. He's going to get a lot of extra wear right here on his elbows. And again, he's trying to take care of this jacket. This is the nicest thing he owns. So I figured as those start to wear more and more, he just adds some leather patches to it. So with the jacket on me, I took a white chalk marker and just marked out where exactly my elbows would land. For this, I'm using this scrap of chrome tam leather that I just happen to have laying around. I was specifically looking for something that was kind of close to the color, but, but not right, because that's what he would do. He'd try to find something as close as he could, but this is the best he can come up with. This, I just used a pair of scissors to cut out a rough shape and then refined it in place until it had this kind of oblong shape that I was looking for. Now, my guy, uh, a seamster, seam, oh, what's the male version of seamstress? Somebody who sews, he is not. He does not have a good grasp on how to do this thing. So he does the best he can. And I'd want that to be reflected here. So I'm not gonna use a machine or anything. I'm gonna hand stitch all of this and I'm gonna try to make it look a little clumsy. But I'm also gonna be honest with you. I am not very good at hand stitching stuff like this. So some of this, it's just me. I'm just, I'm a little clumsy with it. So I started by kind of laying that patch in the place where it should go and using a hooked awl to punch a hole through both the leather and the jacket. To be really clear, I just want the leather. I'm trying not to punch all the way through to the lining. Basically, I'm punching through the leather, through the jacket, and then letting that all come back out a little bit just outside of the leather. Then, so I can just hide that first knot that's gonna be at the end of my thread, I first fish it through the holes just in the jacket, pulling that knot all the way tight. Then I put the leather patch back into place and fish my needle through all of the holes at once. Once that was secure, I went back in with the awl again and punched my next hole the same way. I just continue doing this, making what's called, I believe, a whip stitch. Basically just kind of making a spiral of that stitch all the way around the outside. It's kind of rough and kind of rustic looking. And I really love that. I love how these little details came out. It straight up looks like a patch out of necessity, right? He was wearing those holes and he's like, you know what? I don't have the money to have somebody else take care of this. I'm gonna take care of this myself. That being said, I want these to be kind of worn too because he's had them for a little bit. So I just went back in with some sandpaper and gave him a good scratching up. To add another kind of patchy area of interest, I just went ahead and added another patch in exactly the same way down close to my thigh. This could be him just walking through the woods and getting a catch there and a little rip happens. So doing his best to preserve this jacket, he just puts a patch in. And with those, I think we already have some pretty cool storytelling. We know that like, because of the general nick of the jacket, it's older. It's had a lot of wear and tear, but he cares enough about it to patch it and try to make it better. Clearly, he doesn't have the money to just kind of toss out and get a new jacket. He's trying to make this one last as long as he can. Still, I wanted to add a little bit more story to this. So first, I decided to add another rip down at the bottom by making a cut right on the edge of the coat. This, I just went back in with another whip stitch, stitching that slash closed again. It's a tiny little detail most people won't notice, but again, it adds to that same story of him really trying to take care of this thing and make it last as long as he can. 
Now comes one of my more favorite pieces of storytelling that I'm doing with the outside of this jacket. So my guy, yeah, like he's fallen into being a gambler and with that comes some, some pretty bad stuff. He's pretty good at talking his way out of situations, but at least once, man, he didn't, he was not able to. So because of that, I decided to just stab myself in the back. I'm gonna say this one wasn't a crazy deep wound he was able to pull out of it, but now, like, I'm not gonna be comfortable with somebody standing behind me. Like, that is gonna be a piece of that storytelling. When somebody's over behind me, I'm gonna be very much like, mm, I don't, I don't like you being there. I don't feel comfortable with it. Again, I just closed this up with another whip stitch. It is a crazy tiny detail that, like, 99.9% .9 of people aren't gonna notice. But I am, and those little tiny details, they add up and tell a story. And whether you know it intellectually or subliminally somehow, like, that still adds up. Take, like, Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. The actor actually wore all that gear and went, like, riding his horse, and a bunch of tiny little details like that were added into it just to make the overall thing tell more of a story and feel more real. But like how often do you go scene by scene and be like, oh, I see a little of embroidery here. That's from when he was with the elves. Like you don't, it just, it tells the story automatically. Now I did decide to add one more patch and uh, it wasn't trust for looks. It was because I ripped that sleeve earlier on and needed to add in a leather gusset there just to cover up that rip and stop it from getting any worse. And that's why I was really happy about that rip because it helped kind of build that story. That's an actual thing that happened and I actually had to patch it that way. And I'm not gonna lie, once I put it on, it felt really good. That patch worked out great. Not only that, but aside from those looking from the outside at my costume and seeing those little details, I know they're there. And that's gonna dictate kind of how I play this character and how I feel as this character. All right, so now that we have like the storytelling beats down, I wanted to add some extra functionality to this jacket too. And a lot of you had some great ideas in the last video when I asked of things to do with it, of like what I should add. And number one was pockets. And I agree, this thing actually has no pockets. So like, I absolutely have to make some internal pockets. And luckily the lining is actually a really strong material. I thought I'd have to add some backing to it or something so that the pocket didn't rip out, but it was more than strong enough. So I busted out some of this scrap linen that I just happened to have lying around. This I cut into some roughly six by six inch squares, making two of them so I could have one on either side of the inside of my jacket. And that roughly six inch square is super arbitrary. That was roughly the space I thought would look good in there, but you can make pockets any size you want. I started by folding over roughly an inch of what would be the top of my pocket and ironing that down. And then I folded that in half to give me a really strong, clean top of that pocket. Again though, I want all of this stuff to look like he did it. So I'm gonna hand stitch all of it. Not well. And that's again, not all a character decision. I'm just not really good at it. <laughs> but in order to hold that top flap down, I decided to do what's called a running stitch, which is like your stereotypical like cartoon stitching. It goes in, comes back around, goes out, in, out, but instead of doing it that way, like bringing the needle all the way through and pulling the thread through and then coming back out, I actually did this kind of little ruffled zigzag pattern here, pushing the needle through all of those little folds. Then I simply pull the thread on through and I have a nice line of those running stitches. And that, and this isn't like an ad, we're not actually being paid by Skillshare for this one. I learned that one on Skillshare. Bernadette Banner showed me that one, so cheers, it works. I just continued doing that all the way through until I had a nice secured stitch. Then I folded roughly a half of an inch all the way along the rest of the sides to give me some extra meat to sew into and to keep those edges nice and clean. From there, it was a simple matter just to pin them where I wanted them inside of the jacket, this time making sure I'm only going through that inside layer of fabric. You don't want those stitches showing all the way through to the front. That would look weird. Then I used that exact same running stitch technique to get these things locked into place. And look at how slick these things work. They're, they're pockets, you know, they hold stuff. I feel like I'm overexcited about those pockets, but it's like, that was really easy to do. They're good pockets. Though while I was working on that, I did decide there was one more little bit of that storytelling I wanted to tell, specifically with the dirtying it up. Like it looked, it looked old. It just didn't look like it had ever had like dirt on it. It just looks worn. So to quickly remedy this, I just grabbed a rag and some dark brown leather dye and simply blotched it all along the bottom and anywhere I thought dirt would build out. Then I went back in with a brush that I dipped into that same dye and then flicked it so that little spots would also appear. This represents like you're walking on a muddy street and it's splashing up or maybe a horse cart comes by and splashes you. Finally, I added just a whole bunch of dye to that stab wound in the back because if he was stabbed, it was gonna bleed, right? So I want there to be some kind of a stain there. Again, just the little details. I don't know, maybe I was going a little crazy with it, but I like that. 
Now there was one final thing that a lot of you had kind of said in the comment section, knowing my guy was a gambler and one that wasn't afraid to cheat a little bit. And that was specifically a pocket where I could have a hidden card inside of the sleeve. And I so love this idea. So like, how could I not do it? But I had some criteria here. I wanted it to be really easy to just reach in fast and grab it. I didn't wanna to have to fiddle with a flap or anything, which means I can't really use fabric because fabric is slippery and the card is slippery. And I'm afraid just by moving my hand, the thing's gonna fly out. So instead, I decided to use some more leather, cutting a little square that was just about a half inch long on each edge. Except, mind you, for the top. The top, I wanted to keep a little bit short so the card actually pokes out just a little bit so I can grab it easily. And thanks to the roughness and kind of tackiness inherent in the back of leather, the card actually kind of sticks to it a little bit. So with the card down in place where it would go, I used my wing divider to mark out where I'd want all of my holes for the stitching to go. Then I went back in with my hole puncher on its smallest setting and punched all of those holes out. Then I just turned that sleeve inside out and lined up the card roughly as far back as I thought it would be convenient to grab while also being really hard to see. Happy with that spacing, I replaced it with my piece of leather and then just did a simple running stitch going in one hole, out the next, in one hole, out the next to lock it into place. This doesn't have to be particularly strong because it's only ever holding the weight of a card. I'm not gonna worry about like cramming a bunch of other stuff in there. And I specifically couldn't. I made it really tight too. So it's very flat to the sleeve so that it kind of pinches against the fabric and will hold that thin card into place. Once I turn it back inside out, you can't even see that little pocket is there. And look at how slick I'm able to pull a card out of it. Oh my God, I love it so much. Hold on. Ugh. I'm gonna put it on right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is now one of my favorite jackets. So not only because of all the storytelling, like for the LARP, for sure, it's gonna be an awesome little piece for me, but it's genuinely really comfortable. Like after beating it up and getting any of the stiffness out of it, this little rip here in the gusset that I made in order to kind of compensate for it, like it's genuinely, a really comfortable, a really comfortable coat. I like it a lot. And it's just really cool to have like all of these little internal pockets that I made, all this extra storytelling, the fact that I can pull a card out just nowhere. I'm sorry, I love this thing. This thing is great. <laughs> Sometimes you just make a project that you're like, oh, this might be fun. And then you really kind of throw yourself into it. And oh man. It was a good time. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, since I am gonna be in Conquest next week, there isn't gonna be a video next week. I tried to get one ahead in the bank, but I just, I had so much to do, so sorry about that. But when we get back, we're gonna be telling you how it was. We're gonna have some fun stories, so man, I can't wait. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. You made it all the way to the end screen. YouTube loves when you do that. It's a great way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our skill monkeys over at Patreon and we couldn't make the, any of this without them. It's because of these incredible people that we're able to make this thing run and we love each and every one of you. If you'd like to support what we do here, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these over here that YouTube thinks you like, and that'll help support us too. I'd say pick the one on the right, but I mean, I made them both. I like them. They're both good.